I want winners. I want people that want to win. Hey, Alt Double G here for We Want Winners. I mentioned when I was talking to Rod that I was going to try and do a midweek podcast only update. So that is what this is. Hopefully it is useful. Hopefully you enjoy it. This will be a short podcast. And I'm just going to talk about some of the stuff that's come out about the 49ers and the Rams as we get ready for Sunday's matchup this weekend. So for an injury report, today is only Wednesday. Tonight is only Wednesday night. You'll hear this Thursday morning. Uh, on the 49ers side, Dre Greenlaw missed Wednesday's practice with a groin injury. Kyle Shanahan said the issue merely was due to wear and tear, and Greenlaw was sprinting at close to full speed on a side field during the practice on Wednesday. The issue is still a concern considering that Greenlaw dealt with a groin injury in 2021 that required surgery, and he missed most of the games during that season. Uh, the update that I saw in The Athletic said that it was unclear whether Oren Burks or Demetrius Flanagan Fowles would step in on the weak side if Greenlaw had to miss the game. Uh, Burks himself is dealing with a knee issue, um, and he played in Sunday's opener uh, on special teams and also eight snaps on defense. On the Ram side, uh, Jordan Rodrigue, who is a fantastic follow on Twitter, Twitter X, let's call it Twitter X, if you are interested in uh, getting some information on the Rams, she wrote that Joe Noteboom had an ankle injury, was limited in practice, Akella Witherspoon uh, hip, full participant in practice. Also wanted to note, Trent, I believe Trent Williams missed practice, but I don't know if it was related to... I guess get the wind knocked out of him or something on Sunday. That's when he came off the field. Or if it's just, you know, he, he's an OG. OGs get, get days off on practice. The other thing about the Rams, which is a little bit more concerning if you are a Rams fan or just a, a, a football fan, Sean McVay was very vague about Stetson Bennett, who is the, uh, the rookie from Georgia. He is on the reserve non-football illness list. It is not related, according to Jordan, to the shoulder injury that he's been dealing with. And uh, he's been out. Uh, he, I, I do not think he was active on last Sunday. And here's the quote from McVeigh. Out of respect for him and the situation, I'm going to leave all of those specifics and particulars in-house want to be able to do that out of respect for that situation. I'm not going to really have any follow-up information or anything that I'll give in that regard. That's all I'm going to say. I really hope that you can please respect my wishes in regard to keeping that in-house. I understand you have a job to do, but there are certain things that are a lot bigger and more important out of respect for the particulars and the specifics want to be able to keep it in-house, and that's where I'd like to leave it. Please. So... For us here at We Want Winners, obviously hope that Bennett is is okay uh, and that it is nothing, uh, you know, important as far as seriousness uh, of, of injury or of personal health or of mental health or anything like that. So based on what McVeigh said, uh, I think there's going to be more. He actually created a ton of questions with the way that he uh, said that. But um, uh, yeah, I, I imagine more is going to come out, maybe from Bennett himself, but uh, that is the information we have about Sets and Bennett and why he is on that uh, that that non uh, that non football reserve illness list. All right, so the Forty Niners uh, they took care of business, obviously against Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh, and now they go to L.A. And play the Rams in what I would consider a bit of a home game for the 49ers. I think there will be a lot of red in the stands on Sunday. Uh, the Rams took care of business by beating the Seahawks 30-13. to I think that was a, a bit of a surprise for most of the NFL. They took care of business themselves in a year in which I think most people 
thought the Rams would be average or less than average. And we're only one game into the season, so still a ton of football left. And it's a good test for them to see who they are to play the 49ers, who I think most expect to be the best team in the West. Now, what the Rams have still is one of the scariest defenders in all of football in Aaron Donald. Uh, What does that mean as far as what the 49ers will do? Well, they're going to run away from him as as much as possible. They're going to try and, uh, as much as they can, stop or... uh, you know, take away the pass rush, which may mean uh, shorter, shorter throws, shorter drops for Brock Purdy. But I, you know, the one thing that Seattle did well was run to the outside. Uh, Kenneth Walker actually had uh, almost a six yard per average against the Rams. So I kind of wonder if the 49ers saw that and, you know, CMC is, is licking his chops there, even getting stuff with Debo and Ray Ray getting to the outside may be pretty interesting. Even, you know, Kittle on a jet sweep or something just to continue to, to test the outside uh, and in that run game. Um, as far as the Rams are concerned, uh, Stafford against the Seahawks was uh, very successful in the middle of the field. Uh, Bobby Wagner specifically, and this is another Jordan Rodriguez report, said uh, the the center of the field was more open because the Seahawks defenders had to account for receivers running routes outside of the hashes. Um, it, it may be a little bit harder because obviously Fred Warner, from a, um, from a passing standpoint, covers a, a whole lot, a lot of ground. He's almost like a defensive back out there when he's in coverage. But you would imagine that the Seahawks would probably similarly try to test the the hashes to open up that middle a little bit, see if they could get Warner moving in, in certain directions. And, you know, they have the the, the rookie from uh, Nakua who, who had a giant game and looks to have a, a second giant game in a row against the Niners. Um, Stafford also not under a whole lot of pressure against the Seahawks. And I imagine Steve Wilkes will dial up some blitzes to see how Stafford deals with the pressure. Stafford, not the uh, fleetest of foot when it comes to quarterbacks, though uh, one of the things that he did do this year was uh, drop a little bit of weight for agility reasons. And, you know, as you get older, as we've seen from someone like Tom Brady, you know, really cutting out the extra weight to, to just give you that that little bit of, you know, tenth of a second here and there uh, can, can be everything for for QBs especially as they get a little bit older so we'll see how Stafford deals with the the 49ers pass rush uh Nick Bosa Drake Jackson uh they you know they the Niners had I believe the Niners had five sacks uh Rod and I were talking about this on Sunday so uh we'll see what they do against Stafford here to see if they uh, attack him a little bit more than than Seattle's able to do so so as folks who listen to Thompson to Clark know Brad Evans is a diehard Rams fan. And I asked him for a prediction, and he said, you know, you want me to go with my heart or go with my head? And I said, whatever prediction you want. He said, I'm going with my heart here. I'm a diehard Rams fan, and I'm saying 23-21 Rams. Stafford to Nakua late leads to a last-minute field goal drive for the Rams to come from behind at home to beat the Niners. Now, my prediction is a little bit different. Uh, I believe the Niners will control this game. I don't think it's going to be quite as easy as the Pittsburgh game was. That was just a different performance altogether, and Pittsburgh just came out, uh, especially Kenny Pickett, was just so off early on, seemed flustered. Uh, very early on. Stafford is not going to be as flustered. The vet, Super Bowl champion, he's going to be able to at least uh, in the beginning there, you know, sort of analyze what's going on and maybe even take advantage of of what the Niners are doing. But I do think the talent on the defense is just too much. And they will eventually start getting to him. I still think he's going to have a decent amount of yardage because they're going to have to throw. They can't really run the ball. Uh, they, they, I know they had three running scores, but uh, they did not run the ball uh, offensively a, a, as kind of their reason for, for picking up yardage. It was mostly Stafford through the air. So I think they're going to struggle running the ball, which means uh, 
Niners are going to be able to to blitz a lot and and to be able to give Stafford a bunch of different looks. I think Bosa will probably get his first sack of the season. And I think they'll be up late, something like 30 to 13. And I think the Rams will, you know, score a late touchdown to make it a little bit closer. I have the Niners 30 to 20. And it's just, you know, the the thing that makes it really hard for Rams fans, I imagine, especially when they play teams like the 49ers or like some of the more national teams like the Dallas Cowboys, is that the, the fans just travel. And if your team isn't in a market where there's just such a hardcore hometown fan base like L.A., it just means that the Niners are are going to have an advantage that is sort of unexpected for the visiting team. I think that's going to make a difference. It has made a difference in the past, but I will say, I said this on We Want Winners. I said this on Thompson to Clark. Shanahan kind of little brothers, you know, big brother, little brothers, Sean McVay. But Sean McVay can look in the mirror and go, yeah, you know, they, they beat us during the regular season, but we won the big game when it counted and, you know, going on to the Super Bowl and, and such. So, the, McVay still has that over Shanahan. I just think that the level of talent here is is, is a, a bit different. This this is probably the best, at least talent wise. Now we're only going off of Week One, and I'm not one to just jump ahead and go, "Oh, the Niners are going to win the Super Bowl." I would love to see that. I haven't seen it in quite a while, but you know, if we're basing it off of last week and what the Niners did, the the talent discrepancy is, is probably more than it's been in a very long time in this rivalry. So that's my pick. Niners, 30. Rams, 20. Stafford going to have to throw the ball a lot, and he doesn't have his best receiver in Cooper Cup, and I think that's going to make the difference. All right. So for uh, this show, uh, this little mini episode, this midweek mini episode, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found some nuggets of information that maybe you hadn't researched yourself yet. There's going to be more to come out. There's going to be an injury report, and, all, and Shanahan will talk to the press, uh, all that. So stuff could change between uh, now and game time on Sunday. Uh, it, I hope to do this for most weeks. I think this is kind of an interesting thing. It allows me to also do some research and check up on stuff, and and it keeps me you know, making sure that I know the team that the Niners are going to play so that on Sunday – when I do the post game recap with Rod, I am in the know here. Uh, there's a podcast that's going to be in this feed on Friday. Brian and I will be back for the death lineup. We're going to talk about Team USA. We're going to talk about this new rule that the NBA Rules Committee just uh, signed on, uh, which is against load management, uh, anti load management rules in the NBA. And then also we'll talk about, you know, the Warriors still have a couple slots to fill on their roster. And uh, they've been bringing more people into camp, or not even into camp because camp hasn't started, but just in for workouts. Uh, one of those, well, two of those are former Warriors that I saw today. Juan Toscano Anderson and Bazemore, Kent Bazemore, I saw. Also saw Derek Favors, which is kind of interesting, but he's, you know, he's not... The same Derek Favors, of course, or else he wouldn't be out there. But he's just a long body, and he was fairly athletic. I don't know what his status is as an older man these days, so I'll have to do some research before Brian and I chit-chat about that. But uh, that is it from here. I'm Double G for We Want Winners, the midweek report, 49ers and Rams on Sunday. Rod and I will be back on YouTube uh, right after that game is over. Podcasts will be up in this very feed a couple hours after that game is over. So check back in for BSPN. I am Double G. See you when we see you. Peace out.